SCP-3966 is called Falling Out, and it deals with like sleep and dreams and it's freaky. It's also very technical and there's a lot of medical jargon and stuff like that. So if it if it if it bores you, you should fast forward a little bit because there's a great summary at the end. But if you hang on and you let yourself imagine a little bit as you kind of learn more and more about it, it's really, really great, man. I think you'll enjoy it, guys. This one's by the Exploring Series. Make sure you subscribe to him. Subscribe to me if you enjoy reactions, and let's do this. SCP-3966, Falling Out. Sleeping is something a typical human does every single day, usually for hours at a time. Typical. <laughs> Despite this, sleeping and dreaming is still a field of science that <laughs> is constantly time. being researched, discovering how our body and mind works while sleeping, new ways to help people fall asleep or get more restful sleep, yeah. and the specific science behind dreams. There's actually a lot too. There are a good number of SCP articles related to sleep, ranging from fanciful yeah. to simply odd. It's creepy but too. SCP-3966 like falls firmly in the unsettling category. Ooh. I SCP-3966 like is a neuroactive polypeptide found in humans that contains no C terminus. If you don't understand what that means, as I don't, all you really need to know is that it's an anomalous chemical found in some humans, which brought it to the foundation's attention. It is found in the cerebrospinal fluid of a high percentage of people that died while sleeping, although not every person, it seems. Okay. When discovering an anomalous chemical in dead people, the Foundation first decides to try injecting some of it into the spine of a living D-class. Oh my god! <laughs> Eleven and a half Poor seconds guys. into the process, the D-class undergoes a sudden withdrawal reflex as their body tries to react to the injection. Okay. They are restrained, but there are no further responses. And after 30 seconds, the researchers withdraw an equal amount of fluid from the subject to balance things out. Huh. The D-class reported a sudden falling feeling after being injected. And okay. an EEG reported numbers consistent with stage 1 NREM sleep a second and a half before the D-class had reacted to the injection. Interesting. These responses are consistent with a hypnic jerk, an involuntary response when someone is falling asleep and suddenly those. jerks awake again. Why don't More curiously, up? the chemical analysis of the fluid retrieved from the D-class showed no trace of SCP-3966, okay. but instead a new protein was found, which was determined to be non-anomalous. Right. The only oddity then is how exactly it was formed, and so quickly. Hmm. Two researchers in charge of the project discussed the results, Pauly and Dr. Argent. The chemistry goes a little over my head, but Dr. Argent <laughs> basically explains that 3966, which is missing its C terminus, should be extremely biologically reactive, meaning that it should bind to pretty much any other protein and tear it apart. Oh, wow. He expected it to act much more damaging than it did, and he's not sure why it's only found in the cerebrospinal fluid, if it's long living and open. And they still give it, it to It should be class. able to just punch through the blood-brain barrier, but it is, of course, anomalous. Uh. The second test is done in a petri dish, not a live human, okay. in which some of the 3966 fluid is added to some other proteins, but nothing happens. Okay. The third test involves sequencing both the original 3966 chemical 3966-A and the one found in the D-class after injection 3966-B to find out information about the amino acids in each. Basically, the majority of the 3966-A amino acids are found at the beginning of 3966-B okay. showing their similarity but one amino acid at the end of A was unrecoverable after the test. The mass of the sample used also decreased by a small amount after the experiment. So it just dissipated. Dr. Argent asks researcher Pauly to run the third experiment again, as there was clearly some contamination <laughs> due to the loss of mass in the end. Pauly apologizes, saying that she's just been really tired lately, not been able to sleep well. 
She's been trying to take naps, but every time she tries, she almost falls asleep, but then imagines that she's tripping over something and jerks back awake. Uh, the hypnic Whenever jerk. she does eventually sleep, she experiences really bad nightmares. Hmm. Upon hearing that she's been experiencing frequent hypnic jerks, Dr. Argent goes to check on the D-Class, who has been complaining of the same thing. Hmm. He suspects that Polly might have received a dose of 3966 accidentally, and they proceed to check her cerebrospinal fluid just to make sure. Okay. They perform the third test again, but receive the exact same results, ruling out any sort of contamination, but okay. still leaving a mystery as to why the mass of the sample keeps decreasing. They begin comparing the sequence of the amino acids to the human genome, but find that it doesn't match whatsoever, so they look to other species. Dr. Argent suspects that it comes from the environment, but it must somehow be deposited across the blood-brain barrier since it's free of bacteria. He believes it enters the brain at a point deep inside the cerebrum, but it's a difficult place to examine. Hmm. Polly's cerebrospinal fluid showed no trace of 3966-A, but instead contains the highest concentration of 3966-B found so far, 350% higher than found in other subjects. Polly is of happen? course concerned, as she's now a test subject, <laughs> but while they believe that 3966-A affects humans negatively, they're still not sure what 3966-B does. Okay. They're bringing in some human neural tissue to experiment on, but in the meantime, Dr. Argent suggests that Polly try and get some sleep. She's okay. definitely sleep deprived at this point, as she continues to experience hypnic jerks every time she tries to rest. Dr. Argent explains that hypnic jerks are normal, with some scientists thinking that it's evolutionary in nature, stretching hmm. back to when humans slept in trees as primates. Oh, Dr. Argent also mentions yeah. that he had some strange nightmares last night and asks Polly what she's been dreaming about. Okay. She says that her nightmare related to when she was in college and used to dye silk scarves by pouring dye onto water, blowing on it with a straw, and then dipping the scarf into it. In the dream, the designs all came out rather horrific, resembling <laughs> blood and guts and eyes, oh. as if it were staring up at her. Then That's a, a swarm dream. of spiders started crawling out of the ceiling and started lowering web lines into the water, sucking up all the color. The spiders then proceeded to try and stick their webs onto her to suck up her color, forcing her to flee. Oh my. <laughs> Dr. Argent's dream was a bit different, also mm. related to his time in college, when he read a comic about a serial killer named The Head, who appeared as a tall, skinny monster with a giant head and big puckered lips who would <laughs> stick a metal straw up their victim's nose to suck out their brains. Uh. In his nightmare, this creature was chasing him. Interesting to note that both nightmares involve straws and, and something sucking. being sucked out. <laughs> their conversation is interrupted by a member of the Foundation's Cognitohazard Monitoring Department, Ooh. who lets them know that this conversation is being archived, monitored, and analyzed for possible mimetic infection. Okay. Polly is concerned that they're in trouble, but the individual tells them that they're just taking precautions based on the fact that they both had dreams involving chasing and straws. Right. It may just be a coincidence, but they just want to be safe rather than sorry <laughs> when it comes to cognito There's hazards. no coincidences at the SCP Dr. Argent Foundation. tests a sample of 3966-B, the protein that was created after injecting someone with 3966-A and tries injecting it into some neural tissue retrieved from a D-class. Okay. Simplifying some of the science, Dr. Argent concludes that 3966-B is not causing the hypnic jerks, and is likely an inactive protein. Okay. Injecting a sample of 3966-A into the neural tissue, however, results in cell death within seconds, and a wow. large change in the mass of the tissue sample. This perplexes the doctor as he's certain there were no leaks involved in the test, but that would mean that the neurotransmitters and ions in the sample simply vanish. In another experiment Weird. in which the doctor attempts to use a modeling program to model how the two proteins specifically interact with one another, the modeling program ends up crashing. 
Okay. Apparently, it produced an output that made no sense, causing <laughs> the numbers to go haywire. Divided by zero? Confused by the nature of this anomaly, Dr. Argent contacts his sister, Cordelia, a fellow researcher at the Foundation. Okay. He sends her the SCP document to have her look over the situation, and she notices that the SCP is being monitored by the Cognito Hazard Monitoring Department, which concerns her. Mm -hmm. She begins to explain the process of simplifying the ridiculous numbers involved in the modeling process using mathematics when Dr. Argent is interrupted. It seems that junior researcher Polly had passed away in her bed. What? With the cause of death listed as sudden, unexplained nocturnal death syndrome, meaning that they don't really know why she died. What? A testing of her cerebrospinal fluid found both 3966-A and, and B, B inside of her and she had been taking some powerful sedatives at her time of death. Mm, poor Polly. Dr. Argent notes that he dropped a test tube containing some fluid, but got lucky as it only contained 3966-B. He writes that he really needs a nap. Hmm. Continued testing and comparison of the sequencing of 3966 has found no complete matches, but did find a close match at 87% similarity with the silk proteins of SCP-848. 848 are a species of large banana spiders capable mm. of spinning enormous webs stretching over five meters in diameter. God. These webs will occasionally ensnare a number of different objects and entities, both anomalous and non-anomalous, ranging from insects found around its natural habitat to insects found in other parts of the world to bits of paper to some undiscovered insects, to even some creatures which may not even be from this planet. Weird. The anomalous aspect is mostly due to the inexplicable way that these things end up in the webs, with the leading theory being that 848 are able to catch objects from extraterrestrial or extra-dimensional locations. Weird. So basically, the 3966 proteins are not too far off from really weird spider webs. <laughs> Dr. Argent notes that he doesn't dare take any sleeping pills at this point, right. and if he has to sleep with the spiders, he will. While you might think that was some sort of off-the-cuff remark, the next experiment involves Dr. Argent sleeping in the containment chamber of SCP-848. Oh. He ended up sleeping for five hours straight before waking up and bringing in the affected D-Class to join him. Huh. The D-Class was not as open to the scenario as the doctor was, <laughs> and it took not. a lot to calm him down. The doctor ended up sleeping for another four hours, and woke up to one of the 848 specimens crawling across his face. Oh my gosh. He dreamed of seeing Polly wrapped in a cocoon, and notes that the 848 webs are particularly thick today. Hmm. Dr. Argent contacts his sister again, who expresses her condolences over the loss of his assistant. Right. He mentions that he brought the D-Class into the containment chamber with him to help them sleep, but his sister decides that she'd rather not ask what he means. <laughs> they move on to discussing the nature of 3966, which she says is a four-dimensional protein, meaning that the C-terminus is not missing, they just can't see it. Oh. To help explain, she discusses the concept of flatland, a world made up of only two dimensions. Right. If you, as a three-dimensional figure, looked down on a house in Flatland, you'd be able to see everything in it at once, from the residents to inside cupboards and so on. The hmm. residents of Flatland, however, would not be able to see you because you are above Flatland, and for them, there is no above Flatland since there is no third dimension. Right. If you, however, reached down and touched the ground, they would be able to see your fingertip, the part that intersects with their world. With their, the second dimension, Going right. Going beyond that, you could interact with their world in ways they never could, such as pulling a cup out of a cupboard without opening it. Mm. Dr. Argent asks if this means that he could see everything inside of the people as well, and touch them. He mentions their grandfather who died in his sleep from an unexplained cause. He says that people move around, but only end up with 3966B in their systems. And if he tried to reach into a flatlander and they moved, he'd be pulled along with them. 
Hmm. Similarly, the Flatlanders could feel their pull as well. Dr. Argent concludes that this pull would be in a direction we wouldn't notice, like a fall, and says that he has one last experiment to run. The final experiment cool, that Dr. Huh? Argent runs is a test to see the missing C terminus of 3966-A, okay. or in other words, the fourth dimensional ending that we can't see with our normal vision. The test is a success, and the image received of this fourth dimensional protein resembles an insect, or more accurately, Spider. an arachnid. Cool, okay, man. let's summarize, cool. as this can be a tricky very, one to comprehend at cool. first, largely due to the great deal of scientific language involved. What this mostly comes down to is explaining two different phenomena in our world, the sudden, unexplained nocturnal death syndrome, in which people die during their sleep for no clear reason, and the hypnic jerk, which jerks us back awake as we're falling asleep sometimes. Remember that 3966-A, the initial anomaly, was discovered in a large amount of corpses of people who died during their sleep. Right. This protein was seemingly missing a part of itself, basically its ending, which is really weird and should mean that it just runs rampant through a human body, but it doesn't. Hmm. Upon injecting this protein into a live subject, the D-class experienced a hypnic jerk, mm -hmm. and rather than finding the A portion of the protein inside of them, they instead find a new protein, B. Right. B doesn't really seem to be all that odd, except that they find that most of what makes up A also makes up part of B, so they are very similar. They eventually figure that A injected into human neural tissue causes really strange effects, as it essentially folds brain cells into the fourth dimension, beyond mm. our perception. Mm -hmm. This brings in the talk of Flatland, simplifying the discussion of different dimensions and how a creature of a higher dimension would interact with creatures of lower dimensions. Right. Dr. Argent specifically notes that the higher dimension creature could even reach inside and touch a lower dimension creature's interior. If that lower dimension creature then moved, whatever was touching it would also move. What this all means, since we know that 3966 is some sort of fourth dimensional spider, is that these creatures are reaching down into the third dimension, specifically into the brains of sleeping individuals, and folding away some of their brain cells, essentially sucking them up into the fourth dimension. Mm. This, of That's course, kills the person stuff. in a very mysterious and insidious way, but our bodies have a defense system against this. As you might have guessed, it's the hypnic jerk, ah. a sudden bodily movement that jolts us awake and also breaks the spider's web. Hmm. What remains behind in our brain is easily dealt with by our bodies, but if someone were unable to perform a hypnic jerk for whatever reason, death would be inevitable. Like sedatives. This is the fate which befell junior researcher Polly, who had taken large doses of powerful sedatives to help her sleep and Which thus was unable to have jerks. a hypnic jerk. Right. <laughs> wow. All that being said, there seems to be absolutely nothing the Foundation can do about this, with no hopes of containing these creatures. A small percentage of people will continue to die in their sleep due to parts of their brain being sucked into the fourth dimension, and life will go on for the rest. Weird, dude. The SCP universe contains a whole menagerie of different horrors, and while SCP-3966 might not rank too highly in terms of sheer body count, it's pretty high up there for being disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> Spiders in general are one of the most common fears in life, yeah. so thank goodness we don't have to worry about fourth dimension brain-sucking spiders. <laughs> fourth dimension brain-sucking spiders, man. Look, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not, I'm not an arachnophobe or anything like that, but... When I get around a large spider or I know that one might be crawling on me or I get a web on me or whatever, I don't panic, but I'm, I'm quick to try to get it off, you know, you know what I mean? Because I do not want to get spider bitten. I've gotten bitten by, I can't find the score anymore, but um, I, I've been bitten by a number of things in my life, like bugs. And I had a beetle that bit me one time when I was actually... Um, 
trying to get a biology project done of bug collecting and stuff anyway it bit me and i got an infection and yo i had like a pus sack that had developed on my arm i was wearing a sling because the doctor was afraid that if i move too much the infection can get into my bloodstream until it was ready to pop the abscess was ready to pop it was really really disgusting to like this was but it's not just to say it was nothing to play around with and spider bites can be very very bad too so that's just i'm just cautious it's like getting around a wasp you know it, there, where there's an angry wasp or a bee you just get the heck away from it that's how i am with spiders anyway man this was really really good guys i hope you enjoyed it scp 3966 from the exploring series make sure you subscribe to him guys subscribe to me if you enjoy reactions and if you like this video check this one out